So this is it, the Keweenaw cabin build. We are set back about 600 feet through the woods from the highway, and the highway itself is set back deep into God's country in the upper peninsula of Michigan. The build site happens to be in the location of an old homestead. I have no doubt that whoever dug these old wells and planted these apple trees had a beautiful and secluded property about 150 years ago. For this project, all I wanna do is take this spot, build a small cabin by hand, and use it to enjoy the nature. I've got about 31 acres and I plan to use about one of it for my daily activities. Now here's the machine I'm going to be using to dig the footings. It's a 1979 Ford 755 backhoe front loader that I bought for nine grand a few weeks ago. This thing is 17,000 pounds, has a massive front loader bucket, a 30 inch backhoe bucket, and allegedly can dig down to 17 feet. Now we don't need to dig to quite 17 feet, but the frost line is about 42 inches down and we've got a conditioned crawl space. So we have a lot of digging to do. I've already got dozens of hours under my belt with the chainsaw and the DR brush mower, clearing the space by hand. I keep getting poison ivy rashes in every place you could imagine and I'm super stoked to be getting out of the weeds and sitting in the machine for a minute. Now the cabin I'm going to be building is as simple as possible because I have absolutely no building experience, I've never worked in the trades, and I've never even built a shed before. Simple is better. That's why the building is a 20 by 40 rectangle with a 12-12 roof. That way my dig can be a rectangle, my footer and stem walls can be rectangles, the floor plan can be a rectangle, and there are no valleys on the roof to worry about learning how to make. It's something that pretty much anyone can build, I think. My footer has a center run, which will have a cripple wall that will support my floor joists in the middle. The roof will be engineered trusses to support a massive 80 PSI GSL, even though the snow will always just slide off the 12-12 roof. So the roof weight will all be on the exterior walls, which will transfer down to the exterior footings. I will have a front room and a kitchen measuring 20 by 20, with huge 12-12 vaulted ceilings. I will have massive southwest facing windows on the front gable wall. There will be a large bathroom and mechanical room and a large 13 by 20 master bedroom. And when the stars align, I will definitely need to build a pole barn shop. So I have a lot of work ahead of me. I've spent a few weeks out here just clearing some land with the chainsaw and the brush mower and setting up my camp back there. Um, but the more I just stop and like hang out for a second, when I slow down, I guess, the more I become consciously aware of just how beautiful and amazing this place is. I've watched the apples on literally seven trees grow from nothing to almost ready to pick. There are raspberries popping up all over the place. I've been watching a mama deer raise her little Bambi because they live literally right on my driveway and I see them at 8 p.m. every night. This place is silent, calm, and it's just me living alone in the woods. I've done a lot of crazy things before, but this one is definitely the craziest thing I've done so far. But I am taking a huge risk. I've quit my job, I've moved halfway across the country, bought a piece of land, bought all this equipment out here, and I'm bleeding money right now so I can kind of follow my passion and live my life. So definitely subscribe to the channel, share this with any and all of your friends to support the build. Other than that, I want you guys to sit back, relax, and enjoy watching me build this cabin. Let me quickly introduce you to the crew I have working on this project. First off is me. I own the property, I bought all this stuff, I'm clearing the land, and I'm building the house. We've got Frank. Hey buddy. He is a two-year-old bear. He wanders around this place, sometimes snags apples from the trees, and he is in charge of posing a small, but potentially serious threat to my well-being. He definitely keeps it interesting around here. I keep all my food and my toiletries and anything smelly locked up in the car at all times because I do not want him to come knocking at my trailer in the middle of the night. Apparently they knew what they were doing 200 years ago when they chose this site because both my survey engineer 
and the state wetland people told me that this was the highest and driest and best place to build on the property. So we know we have a solid spot to build on. Now all I have to do is choose the direction that I want the front to face. A big part of the decision making process is just knowing how the sun moves throughout the year. I know that it raises from behind this apple tree and travels all the way across the sky in a crazy elliptical pattern in both winter and summer. So I'm going to face the front of the cabin southwest and I'll have that huge wraparound porch on the southeast and southwest sides of the house. That gives me maximum sunlight through my windows from about two to 8 p.m. in the summer. So with the sun in mind, I pulled a 20 by 40 string line to lay out the building and then just simply spray painted two feet outside the string to give me a 24 by 44 rectangle that needs to be dug out. Remember when I said I wanted it simple? Yep, simple rectangle, simple job. Everything inside the spray paint comes out down to 42 inches. The footers I'm going to be forming are 20 inches wide by 10 inches deep. And I'm gonna use these nifty Home Depot forms. So all you do is you slide a two by 10 foam right there and one on the other side and then that is your form. You can hang the rebar on the bottom and the top if you want to, but it's really, really easy and really DIY friendly. I can already tell you that this project is gonna be much bigger than I thought it would be, and it's gonna be one of the biggest challenges of my life, but I do know that you cannot achieve anything great without blood, sweat, tears, and hard work. So I think when that cabin's built, it will all be worth it. And I encourage everyone out there to dive into a project that feels bigger than yourself because there is no greater feeling than making progress towards completing a massive project. Oh my goodness, I got half the foundation dug today. But we have a problem. The hydraulic system in the backhoe lost power majorly. So I still can move the backhoe around, but sometimes it just, it loses power and I can't move left to right. And then I have to let it sit and idle it real low and baby it just to get it to inch around. So there's something wrong with the hydraulics in my backhoe. So, that's not good. Um, I'm gonna have to do a ton of research and again, figure out what the heck is going on with my backhoe. This backhoe was super excited when I first bought it because I thought I could just use it and do all the dirt work and create the driveway. But I've ended up probably putting like maybe 20 hours of work on the tractor and maybe 30 hours of working on it just to keep it running and get it to work. I'm gonna be real with everyone. I'm not having fun with that tractor anymore. The only pressing matter of my entire project right now is digging this hole so I can have a foundation and work on the forms and keep moving forward. So there's a couple scenarios. One, there's something, contaminants or particles blocking flow of hydraulic oil through to the pump so that it's not able to pump anything. And then two, the hydraulic pump is potentially broken and that would suck because that's a $1,900 part, literally $1,900 for that part. And I'm really hoping that's not it. Um, so I'm gonna start with the filter right here. Um, I'm gonna change that out, clean it. Hopefully, maybe it's really nasty and it helps my problem. Oh. Oh my god. Looks like, oh, maybe that's parts of the hoses that are falling apart inside the system. Changed in a very long time either. I thought I was gonna clean that thing, but there is no chance I'm cleaning it. It's falling apart. There's pieces of hydraulic line inside the filter. So I need to get a new one. Luckily, there was a Napa part number 1408 on the little uh, thing inside of there. And so I'm gonna see if I can find that part number and maybe put it in tomorrow. During the week, I replaced the hydraulic filter, which was super nasty. And then I replaced the fuel filter, cut it open, and that was also pretty nasty. I replaced the injector pump oil. Then I cleaned out the fuel lift pump. Then I bled all the fuel out of the lines. And that day, the tractor started up first crank, which is the first time it's ever done that. 
But then more bad news. I was three quarters of the way done with the dig. I just had a little bit more to go and one of the hydraulic lines split. So when the boom was fully extended, it was just spraying hydraulic fluid all over the place. Even though I was spraying hydraulic fluid, I decided to push through and finish the dig because I didn't want to take the line off and then have to wait a week to replace the line before I could finish the dig. So I just pushed through, sprayed hydraulic fluid all over the place and finished the dig. And after multiple months of clearing out a 500 foot driveway by hand with a chainsaw and a brush mower, after getting poison ivy all over my arms and my balls and my ankles and in my boots everywhere you could imagine, after digging in the dirt in 85 degree weather after chainsawing in 106 degree weather. I lost literally 15 pounds of body weight. I learned every system inside this tractor. I changed the hydraulic filters, fuel filters, lift pump filters, oil changes, crankcase oil treatment, everything you could imagine. After digging for two straight days with a shovel by hand, my foundation is dug. I've been working really hard on this project and I've been working really hard on these videos, so make sure you guys subscribe if you wanna keep up with my process. I love you all, have a good day, goodbye.